Okay, so honestly, I'm probably about to regret making this video because it's just so embarrassing, but let's talk raw numbers. What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, and for the last week, I've been playing pretty much non-stop PlayStation 5. In fact, this is Spider-Man Miles Morales. This is currently my third playthrough of the game because I am incredibly close now to getting the Platinum Trophy, but last night, I decided to do something a little bit different with my PlayStation 5, which is check out one of the newer features. If you go into the profile settings, you can see your total play hours of any game that's ever been on your PlayStation 4 or your PlayStation 5. So yes, this does actually include stuff like demos and betas and of course the big main games. And I was genuinely shocked because there were some games that I remember playing and loving that I had surprisingly low hours in and some stuff that I downright hate that I have hundreds of hours in. So what I wanted to do today is look at the data to see some of the raw numbers of the games that apparently I love the most, or at least somehow got completely addicted to. Now before we get into this, I do want to make just one tiny note. This data is definitely not 100% accurate. It is still a little bit glitchy. There are some tiny things I noticed like, you know, Shinmu 1 and Shinmu 2, they're separate games, but in here they're just labeled as Shinmu. Sometimes you'll notice some stuff is just not completely accurate, but the data even still is very, very interesting. So let's start this off by looking at the most played PS4 game I ever touched, which was actually Grand Theft Auto. Uh, this is completely baffling to me, but somehow I put 371 hours into GTA 5. Now, all of this was online. Like, I, I don't even think I even beat the main story on PS4 because I beat it back on PS3. So it's crazy to think that I put 371 hours into this, but I have a good excuse, which is that for a while, I had this weird thing where I would be really, really stressed after work, like, and I'd be at the bookstore and I'd get all my work done and stuff and I'd come home and I would just be so out of my mind, like messed up because my bosses had yelled at me or like a customer had got mad about something. So I used to have this habit where every single day I'd come home and just do the races. I wouldn't even actually do anything else. I would just do the races in GTA 5 Online for about two hours every single day. Like it's kind of baffling to think that clearly I did this for quite a while, but 371 hours. Now the next entry, it's something that makes more sense because, I mean, I put a lot of time into it and that was the Final Fantasy VII Remake. I think that this is one of the most played games I have for the entire year for sure, but I put 130 hours into it. And what's kind of interesting is this was all pretty much just two playthroughs. I beat it on normal difficulty and then I beat it on the extra hard mode, the way I could get all the trophies. And this basically, this 130 hours was only getting the platinum and I'm glad I got it, but Jesus Christ, when I actually see that number, 130 hours is a bit of a shock. But while we're on the topic of PlayStation exclusives, I do want to take a look here at two, which is Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, surprisingly, I have 76 hours in that game. I mean, I'm not sure if I thought that was going to be more or less, but 76 hours still seems like a lot, especially because all I did was finish that game. Like, I didn't really do a lot of the side quests. I didn't do a lot of exploration. I don't think I ever touched the DLC, and somehow I put 76 hours into it. Whereas Ghost of Tsushima, I put 69 hours into Ghost of Tsushima, and uh, I mean, I'll just say this, I felt all 69 of those hours, because yes, I did some time in the multiplayer, but most of the 69 hours was just me completely finishing the map. I did every optional duel, every side quest, every fox den, I got every single unlockable. So 69 hours, really it isn't that bad. But now let's talk about one of the ones that I'm definitely the most embarrassed about, which is Fortnite. Oh my gosh. The raw number is 328 hours in Fortnite. Oh my god, how many days is that? Is that like like 15 days of my life spent just playing this freaking game? Like, okay, so I have an excuse for this one as well, 
my friends and I got incredibly addicted to Fortnite for a while during the early stages of it. Before there were like planes and race cars or way before there was even golf carts, we would just log on there and play a bunch of hours every day. Like we didn't even buy the battle pass or the skins or anything. Like we were just the stereotypical absolute amateurs who would log in, ambush some players, die a bunch of times and occasionally get a victory royale. And I don't regret that time. Like it's funny to think back of how I spent Oh gosh, I guess I probably spent a couple months playing that game pretty much every single weekend, all weekend, but still 328 hours is bonkers. Now I want to talk about two here that are definitely a little bit surprising to me, which is uh, games that I played a while ago, which was the Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy IX. Now these are the HD ports they did. I'm sure some people remember this, but basically instead of like uh, just making the full HD remakes, these are like upscaled PC ports to the PlayStation 4 that had cheat codes and stuff like that. But Inside this version of the game, they did also have trophies, and I tried to get the Platinum Trophy for both. I did manage to get the Platinum Trophy for Final Fantasy VII, and I'm working on the Platinum Trophy for Final Fantasy IX, but it's funny to me that I spent about 50 hours with both of these, because in my mind, it seems so much longer. Like, it's almost hard to even explain, but I spent a lot of very, very pleasant nights trying to beat these optional bosses, and kind of just loving both of these Final Fantasies. So, it's it's almost kind of baffling that combined both of these games on PS4, I only spent about 100 hours with. It seems like there's some kind of like psychological phenomena where if you're enjoying an experience, it gets like stretched out in your brain because Another one here that I apparently didn't play that much was Rocket League. I only put 69 hours into Rocket League. That felt for sure like it was double or triple that. Like, I, I seriously remember so many times of playing Rocket League. But I guess also part of the problem is that this is just the PlayStation 4 numbers and PlayStation 5 numbers. Of course, this isn't my Nintendo Switch data. This isn't any of my other consoles. It's not my Xbox. And so that's why, even though I have a lot of games on here that I played for hundreds of hours... There is stuff like Dragon Age Inquisition, I played a ton of that, but all on my Xbox. The Witcher 3, I played a lot of that, but on my Xbox. And so stuff like this, it's kind of interesting to see just my PlayStation data so clearly recorded. Now here's another one that I'm definitely embarrassed about, Destiny 2. Now I want to talk about Destiny 1 and Destiny 2 at once. So Destiny 2, I somehow have 99 hours in that game, so at least I can say that I played less than 100 hours of that game and additionally destiny one i put 233 hours in now there's something about this uh, I, okay so some people are going to get mad about this I went through this weird phase a couple years ago where I wanted to try and do a big review every single week. And that sounds easy. You think, okay, you just beat one game a week. The problem wasn't finishing the games. It was finding games to play because there are sometimes months at a time where there was no big release. So I got in this weird habit where every time there was a major update for Destiny, I'd log back into the game and just try and relearn everything. I'd grind all my guns up and then I'd make a big video saying, oh, this is the new giant DLC update, or here's the new, like, patch notes and stuff. And even though I never wanted to be a Destiny YouTuber, I spent so much time in that game. I just want to make it clear that I'm not saying the game is bad or that the people who play it are pathetic or whatever. It's just that I was never truly motivated to play it purely for enjoyment. It was always one of those games that I was only playing to try and create content. And to be honest, I don't really think like this anymore. Like, if I am in the mood to play a game, if I want to turn something into a project, that that's fun for me. Like, the creation process to me, writing the script, getting into the sound booth and recording the audio, that stuff is really, really fun, but I only want to do it for games that are interesting, and that's why I haven't done a Destiny video in so freaking long. It's just because, you know, I'm just kind of in a phase now where I know that Destiny keeps getting bigger and better, but I just don't want to log back into that live service game. But speaking of live service, holy heck, Final Fantasy XIV, 197 hours played. 
So this on its own is very shocking to me because the number itself is so large, but additionally, I'm actually kind of just stunned that I played 197 hours of this because I have also played a bunch of Final Fantasy XIV on PlayStation 3 and also the PC. So if I combined all my playtime, I'm probably up to like 500 or 1,000 hours total in Final Fantasy XIV. Now this time spent, I definitely don't regret at all because I know I've said this before, but I'll definitely say it again, Final Fantasy XIV is the best MMORPG in existence. It has the most friendly fan base, it has the coolest players, it has the best abilities, it has the best class system, it is the best MMORPG. And while I'm not playing it right now just because I'm not really in the mood for an MMORPG, if I ever go back, it's definitely going to be the freaking world of Eorzea. Now let's talk about this next one here, and uh, one I'm definitely kind of surprised about, which is Spider-Man. The original one, I put 60 hours into that on PS4. Now this one's shocking to me because I actually thought it was less. I, I figured I only put about half that. I kind of assumed that I put about 30 hours total into Spider-Man because, I mean, I guess it was really racked up by doing all the DLC and stuff. Looking at this list of most played games is interesting to me because it's half and half. I am just kind of shocked by the games I did put hundreds of hours into, but the other side of the coin is I guess I'm sort of just blown away by there are so many games that I picked up, I loved, I beat, I got a platinum trophy in in about 40 hours. And it made me realize there are a lot of very, very high quality 40 hour experiences. I feel like a couple years ago, so many game developers were obsessed with the idea of the 100 hour adventure. Everybody wanted to try and be Skyrim or something like that. And while there are these projects that are clearly like games as a service, they're things that are constant and progressive and online, they exist to try and get you to log in thousands of hours. I guess I'm also just happy that there are so many incredibly good AAA amazing experiences that are made to just be played in one very hardcore week and then kind of moved on. I guess I I like the way this is going, but this is definitely a cool feature for the PlayStation 5. What are some of your most played games? Let me know in the comments down below. I talked about this video last night on Twitter. One person told me he has 4,000 hours in Rock Band. Like, what in the heck? Thanks so much for watching gamers. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming. All right, now I have to get the last trophy. For those who are curious, the final trophy I'm trying to get is 25 ceiling takedowns. I have every single thing else in Spider-Man Miles Morales. The last thing I have to do is the stupid ceiling takedown trophy, and then I'm done. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.